Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Nah, I'm just kidding. Okay, okay, I'm not making the same joke. It's fine. Gamers, people who do the shoots in the bayou with the stuff that goes boom or stab. Welcome, hi, hello, yes, good to see you, hi, hello, good to see you. It's been far too long since some hunt content came out on the channel and god damn, did I miss you. Yeah, not all of you, but most of you, you know who I'm referring to that I didn't miss. Yeah, you know, you know who I'm referring to, but it's fine. I'm here. Hello, please. Hold your applause. So, you might be thinking, Alan, what's taking you out of your cocoon? Well, it's the introduction of Hunt Patch 1.7 coming to a PTB near you. And it's got some pretty cool stuff that I'm ex super excited for. So, I figured in my infinite gigachad wisdom that I shall descend from the heavens and bestow upon you my loving hunt... Um... Uh, hippies? O's? Hunt hoes. Hunt people. Hunt people! I hunt people. My thoughts and opinions of this upcoming patch because gosh darn, is it looking to be a good one. Now, I know what you're thinking. And you've been playing, and you've had a good run, and you've gotten some kills, maybe some bounty tokens, and then you hear it. The ominous sound of a dolch being fired at you. So you mention maybe kill a player, and you get a bit injured, and you think to yourself, Nope, no way, man. No way, game over. It's getting too tense. I'm just going to alt F4 and save my KD. And then you come back into hunt, and you're met with a new screen. That's right. A reconnect screen. Now, the Hunt Showdown, after many years of this being a requested feature, has uh, actually now added a reconnect feature, complete with status indicator of how your Hunter is, I suppose, currently going <laughs> when you're not uh, playing. So basically, when you rejoin the game after a sudden disconnect, hold it for, uh, you will be treated to a do you want to reconnect screen, complete with the status of how your Hunter is, like are they alive, are they down, etc. And you'll have a period of time in which to reconnect to the game. Uh, this has been a feature that has been requested for a considerable period of time. Like day one, really, week one, day one. Uh, you know, as I said, a considerable period of time. And although there was a lot of complaining about it not being in the game, it's nice that Crytek decided to finally get this feature put in. So, props, you know, kudos where kudos to you. Anyway, moving on, next bit we have a new gun. Rolling on with the good news, Hunt decided to slap in a new weapon, baby. It's me clicking, can you hear me clicking? Me clicking, I'm so super excited. Um, I'm really excited actually, there's a brand new weapon. No, 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 no. I will get back to you. Get back at your end of the video where you belong. Away with you, okay? Clickbait goes at the back, just, just, just back. Mm. As I was, uh, Hunt has a new weapon. They actually have a new long ammo rifle. And it's got three shots. But it's French? Anyway, it's called the Berthier. 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 Bertha, I'm calling it Bertha. This gun is now named Bertha. This is now Big Bertha. And if you get shot with it, I want you to say, Oh, someone has a Big Bertha. Or be like, Oh, that's Big Birdie. Yeah, Big Birdie's coming down. Oh, God, God, I got dicked at 600 meters. Got dicked at 600 meters with a Big Bertha. You know, Big Bertha is now the name of the gun. Anyway, that's its name. So the uh, Bertha 92 is a three-shot long ammo rifle that benefits greatly from the bullet grubber trait. Uh, this is a gun that if you partial reload, it will actually eject all the remaining ammunition that's currently in the gun, meaning it's actually faster and more efficient to fire all three rounds before reloading rather than performing a partial reload, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, this is a weapon that will, like I said, greatly benefit from the bullet grubber trait, which it will allow you to catch one, two, or in fact, the entire clip. You can just eject it and catch it with bullet grubber. But I know what you're thinking. You're saying, wait, Alan, how, how can you actually eject the clip and catch it if you don't reload, right? Like, you, you have to reload the gun, and if you're only firing the quick math here, but if you if, if, if you aren't firing the gun, how, how do you reload it? Well, I'm glad 
I'm glad you asked that question because not only is this a new long ammo rifle to the game since the label, which is scary and awesome. Uh, on top of that, Bertha 92, other than having a bitch in name, Bertha is also capable of being the first non one shot gun, as in gun that has more than one bullet or shell that you can fire, I'm looking at you, the Romero or the Sparks, that will allow you to change ammo types. So this gun is really cool because you can actually change ammo types with it. Now that's, you know, par for the course with the Sparks or the shotgun or anything like that, but as in the Romero, right, or anything like that. But it's really, really cool because it's the first weapon that allows you to do it. Um, it only gives you access to the Spitzer and Incendiary rounds, but that's really cool. Because you can now go into the game with this weapon and you can see someone like, you know, 600 meters or something. Not 600, but like a long way, basically. Not 600, obviously, it's too far. Um, like, you know, 200 meters or something. And let's just say you're not particularly keen with uh, or, or confident at your long range shots. Well, no worries. Just slap on the Spitzer and you have to lead a lot less, you know, or you can swap to incendiary rounds if you really fucking hate red barrels, you know, or the spider. And that counts too. I guess. So if you really hate those things, easy peasy. Um, this is a really cool feature. So with Bullet Grubber, you'll be able to retain the ammunition and then slap in the Spitzer or the Incendiary. Really cool feature. Fantastic. Good job, Bertha. It's all going to come down to the stats on the weapon for me if I use it a whole bunch. I like the fact it's better just to fire the three rounds. I like that a lot. I don't know the stats on the weapon yet. Really keen to see it. I don't know where it fits in the, uh, the pantheon of weapons. That remains to be seen. Uh, next up, we have some new traits. So switching off weapons onto something that we can all get behind. God damn it. No, I will get back to you. I will get to you when I get to you. So help me gosh, I will turn this wagon around and there'll be no ice cream for anyone. <clears throat> As I was. There are some new traits uh, and they've made their way into Hunt. And I'm super excited. Patch 1.7 is introducing three new ones. Two of them kind of meh. One of them pretty great. And I'm going to cover the meh one first because that's just how I roll. Uh, so the first one's called Magpie. Uh, this is not just actually a really angry bird. It's also now a trait. Uh, the Magpie will allow a hunter to gain a two and a half minute buff of varying usefulness upon picking up a bounty. So for one trait point, you will receive a version of an antidote shot, stamina shot, or regen shot determined randomly when you pick up a bounty, uh, which will last, as I said, for two and a half minutes. This, I think, is going to be a pretty good trait for new hunters and players alike. You get it extremely early in the bloodline. It only costs one trait point, which is great. I feel solo players are going to really gravitate to this one a little bit. Uh, and for one point, you can't really go wrong. It's not competing with Dauntless for one point value, but like nothing else does. Uh, and it's, it's, it's pretty okay. Yeah, I personally can't see myself picking this one up. Uh, because I've already got a pretty full trait deck as is, but it's on the list. Yeah, it's on my list of traits that maybe, just maybe. Uh, next up we have Poison Sense. So, do you hate other people healing? Do you like the color green a lot? Do you like your opponent seeing the world through a puke green haze? Well, if you're one of those sadistic bastards, boy oh boy does Crytek have a trait for you. Poison Sense, also for one trait point, will allow you to see the outline of players, not just enemies, but players, meaning allies as well, who are poisoned within 50 meters uh, when using Dark Sight. Uh, their aura will appear as a white outline, not an orange one, so don't freak out. It'll appear as a white outline, similar to what you'd see for the event clues, like the pumpkins or uh, the dream catchers before that you will be able to see a white outline of someone who was poisoned within 50 meters. I think that's a pretty cool trait. Um, it's very niche. Definitely very, very niche. Like, poison ammo is already very niche, and Crytek have already gone on record stating that they want poison ammo on guns to be a PvE tool. So really, we're looking at poison traps, um, or if you, know, you do actually bring it in for PvP purposes. Uh, I think it will give some more utility to things like Hive Bombs, though, which makes Hive Bombs a lot better. Hive Bombs are already fantastic, by the way. Hive Bombs will f*** you. Like, Hive Bombs are amazing. Uh, and they've, they've just made things like killing Hives a higher priority than they already are. And you should already kill Hives when you see them, absolutely. Because, you know, seriously, f*** Hives. Uh, but this new trait's pretty cool. I think using it in conjunction with allies, making callouts, 
pretty good, right? You can say, hey, this person's poison, push them, and you can run at them in dark side and track them and know where they are. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I might pick it up just to tinker with some allies, give them more synergy. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Big maybe for me. Anyway, uh, the new trait, the final trait, the new ones though, is one that I really wanted to touch on because it's pretty good, uh, but probably not for the reasons you immediately think. It's called Vigor. And it causes you to regain stamina and health at double the rate whilst in Dark Side. This is an absolute beast of a trait that I feel is actually appropriately priced at four points. Pretty good. Uh, now, this sounds really good on paper and it's pretty good in practice because you can now get hit and then use Dark Side behind cover to speed up the regeneration of that health bar before you either uh, then medkit back to full with Doctor or maybe even a weak vid shot, which I'll get to. You're essentially trading vision for faster healing and stamina regen, essentially, because your vision goes dark because of dark sight, audio goes a little bit muddy, but you get faster regen. So pretty cool. What I really like about this, though, are a few things, uh, the indirect things. So number one is that this trait is an indirect buff to weak vitality shots. You can now use that dark sight to regen up the bar and then weak vit to essentially full and then... Uh, regen a little bit more with dark side if you want it's an indirect buff to weak vitality shots which i like since you can regen enough of a bar quickly then we get the remaining bit which is really really good if you're using a three big bar setup so if you're all 50 bricks fantastic i think that's an indirect buff to weak vits and i love that uh the best bit about it though in my opinion is for when you're trying to chase down a bounty carrier team like, how many times has this happened to you? You've been sprinting after a bounty team that's running. You're meleeing every zombie in existence. You've got no more stamina left, but you've got to keep sprinting right after them. And you stop yourself, and then your stam regens slowly, and then more zombies come, and it just slows down. It slows down the rate at which you can chase a bounty team. And a bounty team, meanwhile, is just shooting everything because you already know where they are. So... The, the indirect buff I love here is that you can now, with the, with Vigor, you can now sprint to your heart's content, melee all the things on the way, and then casually regain your stem much quicker and just continue the chase. I think that's fantastic and just fight more on the way. That's amazing. All the while, the bounty carrier team cannot do this because if they do that, they'll waste their five seconds of empowered dark side because to regain the stem, you need to use dark side. And while they're in dark side, they're just burning their empowered seconds if they haven't already used it. So that's brilliant. I really, really like that. So as is often the case in Hunt, it's the indirect changes I'm the most excited about. Uh, having a better chance of chasing an abounding team is just mwah, makes me very happy. Super excited for it. Uh, there were some cool changes to existing traits like Vigilant and Blade Seer, which uh, used to be Bolt Seer, by the way, but Blade Seer now, allows you to see items more clearly from further away. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool change, actually, since I love how Blade Seer and Vigilant work at the moment, but I've always been a little bit disappointed at the range and the vision of which it grants. Uh, but now I'm super excited to see that because the uh, items will be highlighted white and you'll be able to very clearly see them from a from a distance I think it was 25 meters for Blade Seer, and I think it was, I think it was 25 meters for both. The distance is pretty good. Very excited uh, for that. Being able to see traps and all that stuff through doors, through windows, fantastic. Mwah. Really good change to Vigilant and Blade Seer. Love it. And uh, next up, uh, don't you hate it when you're constantly clicking and clicking, and you're trying to find the loadout you want, even though it's going to be the same loadout, but you've done this before and you died too soon, but you really just wanted to use the dot. Well, it doesn't matter. Crytek have released loadout presets. Yeah! Super excited for this. Basically does exactly what it says on the tin, though. I don't need to talk about this much. It does what it says on the tin. It tick, you tick the boxes, you set it as a loadout, then you click it to purchase, you click it, and it will purchase and equip items in future. It's pretty freaking nifty. Right? I, uh, <laughs> loadout presets. Can we just have a round of applause and a moment of silence for our non-loadout preset brethren? Right? Fantastic. I don't need to say it's about time, because I'm just happy it's in. Yeah? Uh, and finally, the bit you've all been waiting for. Changes to existing maps. Uh, this is a pretty sick move on Crytek's part. Very exciting move because they're showing us that they're willing to go back and just update old compounds that weren't particularly great to fight in in parts. 
uh, as well as prove that they're committed to keeping the game map alive, as well as by supporting the older maps rather than the new shiny DeSale. DeSale is not as shiny as it once was, but still the shiniest map, and they're going back and touching up the old ones, which I love. Uh, so Crytek have a history of going back and making changes to compounds in the past a little bit. It's like they've added ladders here and there, or, or a roof to get across things that you didn't that wasn't there before, you know, a la Salter's Pork, etc. Um, or Goddard Docks, they've just added little bits and pieces. But they've never really gone out and catalogued all of them. Sometimes they have, sometimes they haven't. Uh, and some of the bigger changes they've made now, they're now telling us, they're now going through it, and I'm very excited. So, for example, Windy Run, uh, the back area, the spawn area of Windy Run is now not a dead zone, of which, uh, you know, a push you'll surely die in. Like, at the moment, it's a dead zone. You push that, you're dead. You've got nowhere to really run. They're changing that, which I love. And they're also making everyone's favorite. Yes, it's time. You can come out from underneath the cupboard. It's okay. It's fine. Scupper Lake is not hell on earth anymore. Which I'm super excited, super, super excited for. Uh, fun fact, this is actually the second change to Scupper Lake. Back in Alpha, like OG Scupper Lake, was actually far worse than its current iteration. My goodness, I still have PTSD from Scupper Lake, OG Scupper Lake. Um, but its current iteration is not as bad as what it originally was, if you can believe that. And it's actually getting changed for a second time, so I'm super stoked for that. So making changes to this map would have just been enough for me. Um... But for just many, many, many compounds to get this treatment, this is a beautiful move on Crytek's part. I'm not going to go into all the maps and all the changes to them because I truly believe you should experience some of this magic for yourself, right? I should not ruin it for you. I'm not going to fucking tell you what your Christmas presents are. But if you are that kind of person who wants to know what the gift they're being given, by all means, go and check the dev stream. It's easy to find this uh, information online. I, however, am not going to ruin it for you. And that uh, concludes the roundup for patch 1.7. This actually went a little bit longer than I thought, but man, there was a lot to cover. But the dev stream did this in like an hour plus, and I knocked it out in under 20 minutes. So, you know, whatever, f*** you. Um, it didn't sound like a lot, but then I started talking, and turns out it was a lot. But I'm super excited to get my hands on this patch when it does drop. I hope this has been an educational breakdown for you on patch 1.7. Super, super excited for it. If you liked it, maybe click the like or the sub button. I don't know. I'm not your real dad. But if I was, I'd be telling you to do it or you're grounded. Anyway, that wraps it up here, gang. Hope you've enjoyed it. My name's been Alan. I'll see you in the bayou. Peace.